Hello, I'm Dr. Anthony Wheeler, and I'm telling you everything that you need to know about pathology. Now, what's going on with your patient right here? Ah, they have a classical presentation of Hans Schuller Christensen disease. You know this and much more because you've been reading your book and paying attention to the lectures, right? All right. Let's talk about Langerhans cell histiocytosis pathology. This is covered in your book, Medical School Pathology and Step 1 Review. It has everything in it that you need to know to do exceptionally well, right? Keep up with it. Langerhans cell histiocytosis. The skin is the primary location of Langerhans cells, which are specialized dendritic cells. Here our patient has Langerhans cell histiocytosis involving the scalp. Langerhans cells are derived from bone marrow monocytes. Langerhans cells present antigen to naive T cells. A neoplastic growth of Langerhans cells is known as Langerhans cell histiocytosis as we can see here in the right image. Notice that Langerhans cell histiocytosis is associated with an abundance of eosinophilia in this particular image. Langerhans cell histiocytosis takes place when the body produces an excessive number of Langerhans cells making it a cancer-like condition. There's a particular immunostain that helps highlight Langerhans cells that you will have to know. It is CD1A. CD1A, and you can see that actually on the panel D here, highlighting those Langerhans cells. At the electron microscopic level, you can see this tennis racket shaped structure known as a Burbeck granule that are found in Langerhans cell histiocytes. And they can be seen right here in this image. Langerhans cell histiocytosis cells are CD1A positive by immunohistochemistry. You have to know that. Letterer seaweed disease is one of the variations of Langerhans cell histiocytosis, which is regarded as uncommon due to the malignant proliferation of malignant Langerhans cells. The disease is characterized by the onset in infancy, that is less than two years old, and shows skin rashes and cystic skeletal defects. Multiple organs may be involved in letter or seaweed disease, and it can be rapidly fatal. Now, let's talk about eosinophilic granulomas. An eosinophilic granuloma is a lesion that typically affects the bones. Eosinophilic granulomas are caused by an excess and overgrowth of Langerhans cells. Also keep in mind that eosinophilic granulomas are classically associated with Church strauss syndrome. And in this image we're showcasing the eosinophilic vasculitis that is consistent with Church strauss syndrome. With regards to eosinophilic granulomas, a pathologic fracture in an adolescent is the most common presentation. A biopsy and histologic assessment of eosinophilic granulomas reveals a mixture of inflammatory cells, including many eosinophils, along with Langerhans cells. With regards to a number of vasculitides, you may see eosinophilia and eosinophilic granulomas. Here's a nose presentation in a patient that has an eosinophilic granuloma. 
And again, eosinophilic granulomas may be seen in Church-Strauss syndrome. And in regards to Hanschuler Christian disease, Hanschuler Christian disease is also known as chronic multifocal Langerhans cell histiocytosis. The malignant growth of Langerhans cells causes Hanschuler Christensen disease, or Christian disease, I should say, excuse me. Hanschuler Christian disease is a condition in which the patient's tissues or organs are attacked by histiocytes as they begin to multiply. The classic presentation of Hanschuler Christian disease involves scalp rash, like we just saw, lytic skull defects, right? You can see that, right? As well as diabetes insipidus and exophthalmos. Now, what other condition do you see exophthalmos? It's a classic condition associated with abnormal endocrinology. Grace disease. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that and much more. Hitting all the high yield points, making sure you have everything you need to know to succeed. Everything you need, everything you need. And that wraps up this presentation. It's a high yield one. Make sure that you have it down. It's easily testable material. Make sure you remember those immunomarkers, the classic presentations, the classic cells. And I'll see you next time. Take care.